Okay, William F. asked Ben Affleck, how can we get the U.S. government to take stronger action against the murderers in the Congo? Yeah, I know that you, you've been to the Congo. I've been to the Congo, so has Nick. In fact, Nick's work writing the New York Times inspired me to travel there for the first time. Spent a lot of time since there, and Nick does this similar kind of work. That's all great, because that's a tough place. Yeah. It is a tough place, like, like a lot of places in, in Africa and around the developing world. And I think one of the things, the simplest thing to say is to s start caring about it, talk to friends about it, develop a constituency, um, talk to your representatives about what their position is on foreign aid, listen to, and not just foreign aid, but, you know, there's a way that we can engage with many of these countries for free, which is our diplomacy. There's kind of a zero-sum game of our diplomats are paying attention to a lot of different things all at once, China, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and things just get lost in the shuffle. And if there's enough of a constituency saying, like, hold on a second, you know, we're interested in you paying attention to this. You could have, you know, John Kerry or the President of the United States engaging on a high-level um, diplomatic uh, initiative with, for example, the Congo, and you could address some of these needs. They're very complicated. They're ongoing. Nick's more expert about it than I am. What but... is the situation there now? I mean, honestly, I haven't read a lot about it in the last That's year. One, I mean, news. one of the problems is that we in the news business are essentially dropping the ball on the world. And, uh, you know, television isn't covering the news anymore. And so that is, makes it incumbent upon people to use social media, to use other ways to hold us accountable, but also to hold governments accountable. Because Congo is a place, you know, the most lethal <clears throat> conflict is World War II. And we can't solve it entirely. We can certainly mitigate it and reduce the death toll. And that's going to require but political you're will. You're so right about dropping the ball on the news, especially TV news. I mean, the nightly news used to complain that they only had a half hour. So how mm. can we cover the world? Yeah. They only put news in the first slug. I saw NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams this week. The last whole segment was an interview with Ben Affleck. Fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. ridiculous. We love Ben Affleck, but it's just not news. They should have done the interview in the Congo. But not news. I did a whole Congo bit. <laughs> but it goes to what we were talking about before. It's, it's what it's we prioritize. News. It's semi-news. It's what we prioritize. Was it and, news? And, Listen, and the cycle news. is about that long. It's a 24-hour, maybe a 36-hour news cycle. Uh, but that's what's so perverse is we have a 24-hour cable media and they never seem to be able to talk about the same thing for more than 10 seconds. So you get nothing in depth. It's just the endless cycling and the book that you were in and when we come back and the Ob yeah. Ebola picture and, yeah. and the little interview and there's no in-depth coverage. You have 24 well, fucking become, hours to put on the air. It's become entertainment. The, the, that's the, that's the problem. It's yeah. entertainment. News used to be a news, lost right. leader. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. That's right. So William Paley said, I don't make money from the news. That's what I have the Beverly Hillbillies for. Absolutely. Right. The That's government right. gave the and networks right. the, the broadcast rights, and, and now they said, okay, we'll give everybody you the news. has to put into the kitty right. so that the shareholders... Because news and entertainment are the same thing. You know? yeah, same thing. Right. You get and, Ben Affleck on fucking Brian Williams. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and me. I mean, obviously, I had a, right? a hand in, in creating that problem. But at least I, my defense was always, at least if people watch this show and don't watch the news at all, they're getting some news. Right. Well, the, the irony <laughs> is that people get more news from this show and Stewart right. and shows like it that yeah, comedy shows than they but that's what you see in news. the millennials with Colbert and, and the Daily Show that's where they get a lot of their news from because there is content no it's cool I just said that it's alright it's fine actually, <laughs> actually I, I, th I think we have uh, more viewers than those shows you but do that's okay you do just, just you know just keep quoting you did, that. You didn't get, you didn't get, you just keep quoting that. You got it, you got it. Uh, what's one thing, positive thing about Detroit you want to share with the nation, uh, Ben, since you've been filming Batman? You know, a lot. I mean, Detroit's an amazing city. On the one hand, it's like, you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Detroit is like a place where we talk about U.S. nation building. I look around, I look around blocks and blocks, there's one house that's being lived in. That's our pitch. We'll come bring your, build your nation. Look what we did for Detroit. I mean, we have a right. whole American city <laughs> yeah. virtually lying fallow in sections. Right. A, 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 an industrial sector that's fallen nearly completely apart. So parts of it's devastating. And I was shocked that we just even allowed, I mean, the UN had to step in because they, Detroit turned off the water to hundreds of thousands of people. So you, know, you can't do this. Water is a basic human right. You can't turn people's water off. But the truth is, like, I visited a bunch of auto plants and I've, I've spent a lot of time in the city. And there is a tremendous, like, Come back, can do spirit that has actually been really, really inspiring to me. So it's a sort of the best why. Why is the movie being filmed there? The movie you'd have to talk to the filmmakers. But a part of what Michigan has done is to take on a, uh, you know, <laughs> Michigan they, like other states. Do they need a, a, a yeah. kind of a post oh, They're trying to build a. a <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm asking. That maybe. <laughs> they're trying. There are there stages in Michigan. They're trying to build a film <laughs> infrastructure. So states. Batman like, and do. Superman are fighting. They wrecked the whole city, and that's where they need it. <laughs> Nice. They have to come I, back you know, to try and do spirit I, to mar shit on them. I, 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 no, 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 no. I love Detroit. Okay. Uh,
with the way we favor war in this country, it would be best to bring back the draft. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. No. Everybody needs to know. All, no. all no. strata of Americans Everyone need to absorb the cost of war. That's yeah. right. My agree. kids, middle right. class Everybody kids, poor kids, right. not just this tiny stripe it's of American a, society. No. National, national service would be yeah. a great idea, but the problem is the military now is so specialized that simply having everybody in it, uh, A, wouldn't create a great military, but also then creates more reserves that are then more likely to be deployed. I, well, I think the political benefits would be such that everyone would go, no, 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 well, we can't go to The war. generals don't want the draft, and why is that? I mean, why, because, why, because, because, because what he just said. Because the more effective force. Yeah, you want a smaller force that stays in longer. Yeah. Well, it worked in World War II. It's they drafted it's, it's a different fight. Diff different so much more technical now. Yeah, it's a very different strategy. I mean, this, this is, military is much more technologically driven. So you have, you, you need fewer people because you've got the equipment to do it. But I mean, this, this idea that by having a volunteer service, we're getting the cream of the crop to sign up is not exactly true either. What we're getting is people who very often don't have any other options in life. I don't know, Teach for America is a great <laughs> program. Those kids yeah. kick ass. Yeah. They're Absolutely. a good no, national. No, but but good. I mean, the, I think the military can take anybody and turn them into yeah, the military's but, badass. Yeah, but they the don't fuck around. Right. And they're serious they fucking men and women. Right. You know but what they mean? don't just take anybody yeah. anymore. They don't. That's that's. Well, the actually, point. they did lower their standards on on weight and drug use. That may be. Which but one were you in support of? <laughs> yeah, which one? That, they just but don't don't you know get this idea that they just take anybody who walks in. That's not true. Something like half of no. young people now no longer qualify for the yeah. military. Right. But I think it's, it's less about a tactical game. Look, the United States Armed Forces could defeat any standing army in the world in conventional warfare almost immediately and overnight. We have the world's best navy, we have the best standing army, the most proficient equipped soldiers in the world. The only things the United States fails at are situations where using a, a military approach isn't an exact fit, like nation building and so on and so forth. So I think the political cost of saying, okay, you know what, you want to support a war, a gigantic war where we're all going to go fight, even if the general's like, we don't need all these kids, is, means that the congressman's kid and the senator's kid and the rich guy's kid and, and the hedge fund guy's kid also have to go and do that cost. Well, the, I, I, the, the, the first mistake, I agree with that, I agree with that. The first mistake, though, that we've seen since 9-11 since, uh, is that we tend to use our military for the purposes of nation building, and that's not the purpose of a military. It yeah. is to blow up things and to, and to wreak military havoc. Military conquest. And then yeah. you pull it out. And then the diplomat and the government-to-government -government relations are all about what those who are there on the ground want their nation to be. And you cannot impose that through a military, and we've learned a dear lesson because of it. All right, let me ask you one final question. Put on your uh, chairman of the Republican Party hat for one okay. second. Uh -oh. Excellent economic news that we got this week. 5.9% uh, is the unemployment rate. Now. Yep. Uh, it was lower. 248,000 jobs created. Right. It was lower. That rate was only uh, lower during one year uh, of St. Reagan's uh, two terms. <laughs> Yeah, but look where it was at the beginning of Reagan's term. So, double-digit inflation, double-digit Look where it was at the beginning of Obama. I know, and but uh, again, it, I, I take your point, and there have been strides made, but it's the type of recovery uh, that is still the driver here. And you do have people who have not felt. You still have... Oh, so many. You still have 5 million people who were unemployed in 2008 that are still unemployed today. Uh, and that is a reality for a lot of folks out there. So is the stagnation in the, in the growth. And it is due to a couple of things. One, the failure to address tax policy, uh, minimum wage, the failure to address regulatory policy, and to create the kind of incentives that in, in require us to manufacture again, to allow us to you build. Sound like manufacture. a Democrat. Wait a you sound like <laughs> no, you're making no, a those Democratic are actually, argument. Those are actually very, re, very Republican what, principles. What it, Eisenhower what it, and and. But you're and for others. I mean, Nixon wanted universal health care. I mean, the, yes. the things have changed. Yeah. Well, here's the result of this policy: is that it is a little bit like what uh, Senator Warren said, a game uh, that is rigged. I was here again, 2004. I remember talking about this, saying these Bush tax cuts are saving me millions and millions of dollars. And if they continue on for four more years, I'm going to save millions and millions and millions of dollars. What jobs am I going to create? Another assistant? You know what I mean? I, I, I'm an actor. I make movies. <laughs> I, I, but I'm just going to get more money. And so, and even if I go make the movies, that doesn't change, of course, the Bush tax cut that I get. And I'm like a lot of other wealthy people who just got buckets of money dumped on them by the Bush administration for, for virtually no uh, enhanced societal contribution. And as such, these policies have continued. The estate tax being eliminated, I think, was devastating to the redistribution, the but fair and equitable redistribution. But you can still write the check, Ben, if you want. Uh, I mean, right. if you, well, if you, I, not to I, you. I, 
U.S. government. Yes, I you can. can. No, I can't you write can. a check to the U.S. government. Yes, you can. You I go guess. ahead. You, the IRS is not going to turn your check away, but That's not how it works. Yeah, that's a dumb argument. That's not how it works. It's not a dumb argument. And I just want to say, if someone who goes through that Netflix list every night trying to find a good movie, you need to keep making movies. Because there's not a lot of great movies out there. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, audience. Thanks for getting me off the hook.